Well, I think we should expect both. I think part of this is going to be what he plans and he sets forth in the year ahead, including infrastructure and how we're going to fix our crumbling roads and bridges. And also, of course, I'm hoping there's going to be an outreach to Democrats and Republicans for us to work together, which we, we sorely need so that we can actually you know, keep our government open, make sure we get to a budget. And, and move forward, because that's certainly what the country wants. You are co-chair co of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Coalition. We've heard a lot about that group, uh, about things that they'd like to get done, but it's been a pretty tough time to, to see any bipartisan legislation, and this goes back uh, for several years at this point in Congress. Uh, how, how do you kind of put your best foot forward with that? Which uh, sort of legislative uh, approaches do you think are the most likely to win support from both sides of the aisle? Well, there's obviously been plenty of gridlock, but what we've found, and we're 24 Democrats and 24 Republicans, we get together every week, we're here in Washington, on issues like health care and stabilizing the individual marketplace and finally getting premiums down. It's an issue we've been working on. I'd like to hear what we're going to do next to actually stabilize that marketplace. Infrastructure is a big topic. We recently put out a report figuring out how we're going to deal with crumbling roads and bridges. You know, in New Jersey, as you know, eighth worst roads in the country. We've got to deal with that tunnel between New York and New Jersey, which is a real problem and a real threat to the whole regional economy. And you've got issues like immigration reform and getting this DACA border security deal done so that we can move forward there and make sure that our dreamers aren't thrown out of the country. You've got real topics, and those are the areas we've really been coming together around. And, of course, the budget. You know, we really want some certainty here. We can't run a uh, country this way every three months and punting and punting, we actually have to make some agreements there. But Congressman, you are 48 uh, leaders of, of a group of 435. And if you look at what's happened in any of the votes that have taken place, it has been almost straight down the line. You're one of just six people, again, who voted uh, with the Republicans on that continuing resolution. So what has to happen in order to see bipartisanship really uh, start to happen on a more frequent basis? Well, no, I think the difference between last year and this year, if, if you look at the Senate, of course, now you can't get things through with just 50 votes. You'll need 60. And in the House, I think there's a, a growing group of us that say you, you, you can't govern this way. And so in order for the president to get anything done on his agenda, you know, whether it's infrastructure or the budget, it's, we're all going to have to come together. You can't just rely on Republicans. You need to reach across the aisle. And that means, I believe, coming to the middle, you know, being fiscally responsible, being, uh, looking at things differently instead of just trying to do things in a one-sided way. And that's what we're working around the clock in the Problem Solvers Caucus to do. But it takes, you, it takes time. It takes reaching out. You can't just jam things through. You've got to, read, you've got to see what actually what we want <clears throat> as well. Having said and, that, though, you're, yeah. you're, you're angry about what happened with the tax bill, with the tax changes. The, the tax hike legislation obviously was very, very difficult to places like my state, right? It was a it raised taxes. Uh, we've got real estate prices, according to Moody, already off. Seven, real estate values already off 7.3 percent. We're, you know, raising taxes on people in my district, as you know, is a huge problem by gutting the state and local tax deduction. So we're, we're fighting back against that. I'm doing it every single day and trying to find new ways to cut taxes for people. But, you know, we've got to deal with that and keep moving forward. And I really think we've got to look at all engines to keep our economy growing. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.